Hey everyone, it's AJ, aka Jane, whatever you want to call me. Uh, thank you for joining me today on another episode of South Park Creative. So I'm going to be giving you a tour of my workspace upstairs. And I realized as I previously recorded the footage that it's going to be 45 minutes or so. Uh, so what I'm going to do is split this up in half and you're going to get to see the, uh, the first half of the tour basically upstairs and then downstairs in the studio garage that's going to be a separate video because I figured you didn't want to stick around for like another hour and a half and or two hours or whatever so please enjoy this and I hope that you um, find it entertaining <laughs> um, you know I think it's kind of fun to look at other people's workspaces so I've pretty much figured that you would like that too and you'll get to know me a little bit better as you know, I explain some things about myself uh, and how I work, so, and, and some of the supplies that I use, so please enjoy. Welcome to the tour. Uh, I love working with the materials that I have, and I've been lucky enough and blessed enough to be able to convert my living room into a studio area, so it's kind of a, a cross-purpose living room, and I love my crystals. I keep them in the windowsill to charge them up and uh, I do believe in their metaphysical properties so whenever I'm creating a piece of artwork I basically choose which crystals to use for which particular piece of artwork and therefore it kind of infuses the energy right into the piece and that's a nice little citrine there so here's the awesome open window and nice open area and when the sunshine comes through in the afternoon it's absolutely gorgeous I wish you could see it so um, I'll probably put it in an Instagram video or something so here's the kind of the general workspace area and I've really just taken the time to make sure that I have plenty of materials that I can use that are nearby and it's the best setup I've had in years. And I'm probably more passionate about my work now than I ever have been. And so I really hope that you enjoy this tour and I'm going to show you some materials that I have, what I work with and where they're at. So this is the fun little part where I get to open up these cabinets and show you the extent of my collection of art supplies. And just keep in mind, this is kind of just a fraction of what I have, but I'm sharing it with you. But what's cool about these, um, these cheap little cabinets, hi, <laughs> is that you can, you can store a lot and they're kind of discreet. And so I can actually keep my living room kind of a studio area at the same time as a living room so that's pretty cool so let's check them out okay you can see my shadow and everything hello everyone <laughs> so let's open up the, I just I had to do this because um, can you see me I had to do this because it, it was beautiful outside today and I opened the windows and so here we go uh, you can see probably yeah, let's, let's go ahead and move back just a little bit There we go. That's a little bit better. Hopefully those, the doors will stay. So this is kind of where I keep some extra colored pencils and pastels. And I believe this stuff down here is, um, yeah, it's, it's most of my colored pencils in cases and things like that. But there's some watercolor stuff in the back. So this is my wonderful pencil wrap from um, Marco that they had sent me. It's very nice. And I'm going to talk about that in another video. Um, everybody knows I love Holbein. This was actually my first Holbein set I bought. And uh, lovely colors there. So I got that on eBay. These are watercolor pencils from Julie Nutting. I really haven't used them that much. They're very good. Um, I just, I kind of transitioned into just using watercolor by itself, so I haven't used them a lot but they will find their place with me in the future. Um, we got the Marco Renoir watercolor pencils. Um, I had just done a review on these and these are actually really pretty good for the price that they are. Um, I mean, they're not, you know, they're not. Okay, I'm gonna move this frame here and open this up. So let's see here. Um, this is kind of where I keep some of my 
extra stuff. There's, okay, I'm going to point this down here. You can see that there's plenty of paper of many kinds. So we'll go ahead and take some of these out. We got mixed media, which I believe every artist kind of needs, even if you're not a mixed media artist. Um, both cheap and nice paper. My fantastic Stonehenge. If you have never tried this paper, you have to try this paper. And because uh, look at all this stuff that you can do with it. I mean, you can do silk screening, you can do watercolor, you can charcoal. There's a little bit for everybody. And it actually is really, really nice paper. Um, I don't do Cop Copics much, but <laughs> but I have it. Uh, I got Bristol board, pastel. I've got all kinds. I'm not going to pull them all out for you, but you get the idea. I have something for everything, and I actually have more paper downstairs. So um, if there's paper sales as of late, I really, I'm like, you know what? I have to stay away because I have enough paper. I have an abundance of paper. Um, something that I believe every artist needs, some baby wipes. Baby wipes. Ooh. Yeah, these are the cheap kind too. But these are great for whenever you have, um, you're working with pastels and, um, the one thing I don't like about working with pastels is that your fingers get dirty, which I have finger cots now, but still, you know, just to wipe off ex excess off your hands, it's good stuff. And and don't flush them down the toilet. That's a bad, bad, bad idea. It's the XL charcoal and graphite. Um, I haven't done a lot of graphite and charcoal work as of late, but these things are really cool. And I mean, eventually, you know, I'll get around to doing some charcoal and graphite. Let's see if I can open this up. Oh! They pack them in real good. So these are like big, big, giant pieces of graphite. And Derwent actually makes the um, the little holders for them called grippers, but I don't have them. I'll just get my fingers dirty and then use my baby wipes. <laughs> so, so you get the idea. The charcoal's similar to that. Um, I've got some pencil rolls in here. I uh, don't even remember which ones these are. Oh, these are for whenever I do readings. And I have, this is kind of a portable little uh, sketching set here. And uh, I keep this with me on the go whenever I'm doing readings and portraits on the go. And then these, I believe, these are the, these are walnut hollow pencils, actually. And they were created for wood burning, I think. But you can use them as colored pencils anyways, and they're very wonderful and smooth. My mom actually found them at a Goodwill, and a lot of them are unused, so... Bonus. Okay. We're gonna explore just a little bit more here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to oh by the way, <laughs> there's alcohol and Mona Lisa Odor the Center. This is one of the best things you can use for colored pencils, in my opinion. Looks like I got some let's what do I have back here? I think I have some gouache extra gouache. This is the, the student grade gouache. I just keep it in one of these little things. I got this at Michael's. It's supposed to sit like this and look really cute, but I don't know if it will. You going to behave? Oh, it sits like that. <laughs> so fun. Good practice. Uh, I have an abundance of gel pens here. These jobs, I got these for uh, coloring books and just, just to have. They were on sale on Amazon for 20 bucks, and I'm kind of a sucker for color, if you hadn't really noticed in some of my previous videos. These, oh my god. They're not all here because I have some, some of them set aside for a portrait, but these are the Faber-Castell pit, pen, pit pens. Yeah, I almost said pit pencils, but they're very nice. And they're India ink. And they're light fast. I'm going to do a review on these, but what I uh, what I love about these is not only are they versatile, but they have a line of bigger ones. Some big fat ones. I love them. They're so freaking fat, and I love them, and they're amazing, and they have so many beautiful, juicy colors. Oh, my goodness. See, see how pretty they are. And you store them like this because um, that's what they recommend for the ink. Sorry guys, I'm looking at my screen and sometimes I'm like talking about a product and it's not even on screen. So I'm doing my best here, please uh, forgive me. These are all of the, hold on, see, I just, I just did that. <laughs> 
<laughs> what was I just talking about? Okay, so this, this is all of the Dr. P.H. Martins that are on the wall. Um, those are all the cases. But what's great about those cases is that they basically are a palais in the lid. And they've got mixing spots here, right there. So if I ever need them, they're right there. I usually tend to use my own palais, but we got powdered graphite by Creta Color. So this actually saves a lot of time if you get a nice, decent ceramic brush or a, a um, hard, like a hog bristle brush. So just FYI, I put this down here, didn't I? So we're going to put everything back. And one more thing. Let's see what do I got. I got a lot of extra stuff in here, like books and like dollar store pads and stuff. These are some Chinese watercolors. Uh, they're interesting. I will probably do a review on them in the future, even though I don't really do that kind of style watercolors. They were eight dollars, so um, big old basket of just different marks or different pencils. You know, you know. I mean, this is like going way back. Some stuff that I bought in a vintage lot, and then grease pencils and charcoal, things like that. So extra, extra. And we're done with this one. The next one's actually a lot more fun, a lot more interesting, I think. By the way, you can never have too much artist tape, can you? Okay. Albrecht Durer, you know, but, <laughs> but you know, they, they do pretty good for what they are. See, I'm doing this backwards. I'm, I'm looking at the monitor so I can get this on camera. Um, I don't know what I effing lost the brush. I'm only censoring myself because there could be possible family watching. You know, I'm just trying to be considerate and trying to keep it PG-13 somewhat. <clears throat> but um, here's the Brunzeal. Fantastic. This is the Super 60 set, so check it out. It's got a little bug, a little slug bug on there. I really love it. I love all the little um, decorations. And uh, yeah, it, I, it's not even just the packaging that got me, but this was actually, it's a set of 60 and it has metallic and it has a couple of, um, it's a 2B and HB on the second, the second tray. And it's got, you know, a sharpener and an eraser, but for 20 bucks, $21 on Amazon, I, I just, I was like, well, it's kind of stupid not to buy it. Plus, Brunzeal is, is a very renowned brand, and I love I love their pencils. So you'll see that in the future. There's Marco Renoir colored pencils that I'll do a review on. I keep saying I'll be doing a review, but promise me. I promise you. Promise me. Promise you. And slow down, Jane. Okay. We're going to take a deep breath, and we're going to say, I promise you, I will get around to them. Okay? So... Stabilo pastel pencils. These are water soluble, and I don't know. I don't know how that works. Like, how does how does pastel become water soluble? If anyone's ever used those as water soluble pencils, please feel free to contact me. I would love to hear your take on that. So we got the uh, I got this like little colorless blender hanging out here. Um, There's a ring light for my iPhone. I've got oh no, I got Prisma color in here. I thought she didn't use Prismacolor. Well, I do. I have the, whoop. I have the Art Sticks. And the new pastels. These little square things. These are, these are great for details in your pastel paintings. Let's see. And I do use Prismacolor um, products. I just don't use the soft core pencils that are modern made soft core pencils. Um, well, we got finger cuts, and I got this external, or this card reader in here. And these are the Derwent um, line painters. I really, I like the concept of these, and I really loved them at first, but they get really, like, they flow, and they kind of get everywhere, and they're really messy. So they're good for messy pieces, but I recently almost messed up a piece trying to use one of those because it just started blobbing out. Uh, these are my... These are my pastels, where I keep my pastels. Some of the, um, the 
I don't know if you just, they're not technically artist grade, but um, these are really good. And so are these, you know, I mean, they, they do well. I don't know how light fast these, these are, but uh, Blick Studio usually makes some decent products. And we get the Aqua Color. These are Lyra's version of the Neo Color. Um, yet another cheap set of oil pastels, and then I've got some more like mid grade oil pastels. Oil pastels are one of those things that I just, I really. I like them, but I haven't really grabbed onto them. They're just something to kind of play around and have fun with. I've done one David Bowie portrait in, in oil pastel, but that was with the Neo 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 Pastel, yeah, by Connor Nash. And that was a lot of fun. But uh, I, I don't see myself using pastels full time. Or at least oil pastels. I could do soft pastels full time. But I'm I'm the kind of person that I like to just sort of use whatever medium feels right in the moment. These are all of my concert tickets from probably the late 90s to present and a lot of these um, I was fortunate enough to not have to pay for because I'm a concert photographer and um, I've been on a small hiatus, hiatus but uh, I really haven't found a little scrapbook just yet for those and uh, I had them in a poster but I got rid of the poster frame because it broke. Right, Poly Color, that's going to have a review. Some more soft pastels by Faber Castell. These are the uh, Tombow Erosion from Japan. Those are really super cute as they come in these little booklets in different volumes with different types of shading. Like this is the, uh, the dull, they call it dull tone. I think they meant muted colors, <laughs> but it's, it's a lot of fun. Eventually I'd like to get the whole Tombow line, but... We're not real concerned about it right now. So, oh, these are, okay, so <laughs> these are the Windsor & Newton um, watercolor markers. These are really nice, too. I should probably put these out somewhere else and not keep them in a bag hidden. Uh, they're, they're interesting. I like them. I've used them a couple times. These are where I keep my extra cheap watercolor pans because you can never know whenever you might need an extra set of cheap watercolors for somebody if they're painting with you or maybe you're um, you're going to be instructing a class so like this particular set is at Michael's for five dollars and I believe I got these at like a half off sale that they had last year and so they were 250 each and I was like well shoot might as well just go ahead and get them get a couple extra ones um, these are the pearl ones that they offer and I did a video on that as well I'll put the link in the description below. <clears throat> it's kind of like a f um, cheap versus expensive pearl color water watercolors. Um, this is a <laughs> speedball set that I have not really used much, but I bought used in a lot. And these are the <laughs> Reeves water mixable oils. I have not even opened these just yet. Um, I'm getting around to it. I'm working my way up to it. I love oils. Um, I just don't. I, I will be honest, I'm kind of lazy whenever it comes to oils because I don't want to put all the solvents away and the cleanup and everything. And <laughs> So I was like, I told my friend, I was like, hey, let's just get some water mixable oils and just see how that goes. And <laughs> she was like, okay. And so I bought her one and I bought me one. We both have not touched ours yet, but we will eventually. Um, extra utility box um, for all your utility needs. And this is, this is a, a little sticker for the South City Art Supply here in St. Louis which is a fantastic local supply store, and you can actually order from them online, too. Um, great people, by the way, and they work really hard, and I love their products because they get things that no other particular art supply store has. And uh, here's another little art bin full of crap. Some pens, extra pens, because you can never have too many pens whenever you're, you're an artist. Isn't that right? So here, here's all the pan pastel little um, cosmetic sponges is what I like to call them because that's basically what they are and um, the soft tools. But uh, I just buy cosmetic sponges to replace them whenever I need them. This is my big, 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 very big, very heavy, kind of. Um, this is full of, like, well, there's, there's charcoal and water-soluble charcoal, or water-soluble uh, graphite in here, uh, like this. And I've got a bunch of blending stubs and ceramic brushes in there. It's really, a, there's no easy way to show you that, so I'm not going to show you. You're just going to have to take my word for it. So, 
so I have a lot of these extra utility boxes just for extra stuff. So here's here's the fun part. Everybody who's watched my videos and subscribed and well, I'm assuming you've seen the videos on all of my favorite water color pencils and my color pencils. And here is a fabulous, fabulous polychromos. And these, okay, the most frequently asked question is where do I get these and who makes these? Uh, they are by Global Arts, Global Art Materials. Um, you can get them at Hobby Lobby if you're shopping out and about. Um, you can also get them at Blick Art Materials and you can order them online on Amazon. On Amazon, I believe these that hold 120 are about uh, $20, $25. So I just bought several of them. And um, and yeah, they keep a lot of a lot of space in, in their port, makes it all of your um, color pencils portable. So I have one for the Polychromos, one for the Pablo. There's Pablo in here, I think. Either that or Albert Durer, let's see. Yeah, these are Pablo. These are Pablo. Pablo! <laughs> so, and then there's one for um, Albert Durer by Faber Castell, which is the watercolor pencils. So, you've seen enough of this. I also have something that I don't use that much, but I, I intend to. It's the Tinted Charcoal by Derwent, which is really an interesting medium. They are like the mad scientists of art supplies, aren't they? And <laughs> what did I tell you? I've got sponges for my pan, pan pastels. So I'm going to put this back together and show you the rest of the place. And yes, what you are looking at are two shelves full of ink and the entire Dr. P.H. Martin's watercolor collection. So these shelves came from Ikea, which were very convenient because they were only like $6, I think. And I uh, put them on the wall there and I was ready to rock and roll because otherwise these were just sitting in uh, the cabinets collecting dust, so now that they're out in the open, I think, you know, sometimes I really feel like, you know, it's a out of sight, out of mind thing, so um, I wanted them in my visibility. So many juicy colors. God, I love that line. And then the rest of them are back here on the back. It's most of the C collection. I've decided that what I'm going to do is do two separate videos of four of these four sets. Basically, I'm going to do one for set A and B, and then I'm going to do one for C and D. And see that mouse? That keeps me good luck. That's good luck. Actually, in the Ganesha cards, the mouse represents the ego. So this is kind of a little reminder to me to kind of let go of my ego whenever it comes to my artwork. I've got one little eco line there because I kind of figured there was really no reason to buy the eco line because it's basically the same concept as the concentrated watercolor. And as you can see, I have a whole abundance of that. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll just try this one out because that one was pastel blue and I hadn't had pastel blue. Uh, this is the beautiful... Let's get this in focus here. Look at that. Hold on. Ooh. It's not even, it's sticking to the bottom, but for the extrasensory experience, you'll be able to see this in the brilliant gold ink. But uh, yeah, these are my Winsor and Newton inks, and my drawing inks. They're so super cute. These little ink wells. I love them. See? They're cute. And they're functional, of course. You know, they're really economical, too. I think these are like $4 each at the local art store. And then for every artist who has ever panicked and thought, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. What am I going to do? This bleed-proof white is the, it's the answer. And Dale Rowney makes one that's like, um, I think it's like solid white or something. Basically, it's, uh, it's, it's an opaque white ink and it's really good whenever you goof up on gouache and watercolor and you don't know what to do. It'll save you. So over here I've got a few of the, I don't want to take them out because they're about ready to fall out. These are some of the Prismacolor markers and the Winsor Newton Pro Marker. 
these in this canister. That's um, Derwent Graphitent pencils, which are really unique. Basically colored graphite that's water soluble. And then I have their drawing, which is like the fur and feather pencils in here. Uh, up here we got Polycolor and we've got the Tricolor by Koei Noir. Those are fun too. I've got a lot of things to review for you guys and demo for you guys. And These are um, Mitsubishi pencils. Yep, the car company makes pencils. They make colored pencils and they make these. These are the graphite pencils and they came very highly recommended. So I bought some a while back. And that's where my Tombos are. And I've got one itty bitty koi illustration marker. I just want to try those out. <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's wonderful to be able to have everything like in your sight. And uh, I'm very blessed with having wonderful materials and uh, being able to work with various items in a piece and just sort of mix and match and do whatever I, I please with them. And, you know, whatever hits me in the moment is, is available to me right there. So... See this down here? This is um, works in progress. <laughs> so whatever ideas I have going on, special things I've already mapped out to do, um, and little extras, they end up there. So there's my little eye that's not finished. It's done in ink tense. Hope you do a tutorial on that. So uh, at least give you guys some tips on how to do um, work in ink tense, at least with an eye. This is um, where I keep my inks. As you can see, we've got um, a selection between Higgins and um, some local artist ink and De La Rowney. Um, I got a lot of those in a lot as well, so that helped out. There's some Windsor and Newton. I think these are. Do I still have them? Yeah, they're in there. I just I love the little cute little boxes that they come in, so I can't really. It's hard to throw them away because they're really cute. And uh, look how cute this little gal is, huh? Isn't she cute? Hmm. Yeah, she's the guardian of the ink. Here's another uh, perch installment here. Um, I've got, this is my special place for the Prismacolor Collie Race. So there's a whole selection here. I actually got, did you know that Collie Race, the name, used to belong to, I believe it was Faber Castell. And then they sold it to Prismacolor, I suppose. And I even got some Spectracolor in here from my vintage collection. Venus Spectracolor. Look up Venus pencils. They're really cool. And then um, I keep my longer handle brushes that I use for watercolor up here. Some extra rulers because you can never have too many of those. So we have more ink up here. There's Liquitex acrylic ink. This is mostly Liquitex right here. Um, everything from the muted selection, which I did a painting of and a video of, if you want to check that out. Um, some iridescent. Basically all these in the back here, those are all Liquitex. And then this in front, this is the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay ink. And um, we're going to do something fun with that sometime, see if we can make our own paint with some of the ink. But uh, this, oh my god, this is amazing. This is, um, this looks like liquid gold, basically, and uh, brilliant gold ink. I'll have to shake it up and show it to you up close. But it's gorgeous. Take my word for it. Up here we have the Perch. Um, these are made by a company called Urbio, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, there's the Derven liquid pencil that I used in a recent video as well. Those are, oh my gosh, they're fun. And they're just, they're a lot of fun. I don't know why they're more not more popular than they are. And I keep my headphones in there. And this is a little, this is from the mini, Aqua Mini Sennelier box, but it's like a little Altoid tin, and I thought maybe I could put some extra colors in there whenever I get them. So here's another one of these um, Boonstash organizers, and as you can tell, I absolutely love them. So what I did was in that big lot that I bought, and this is a separate lot actually that I bought, I got a bunch of vintage Prismacolors. And whenever I say vintage, I mean some of them are from the 90s, I believe, 80s, 90s, pre-1995, because that's whenever Barrel got sold out, or I think it was, they sold to Sanford. 
So there's a bunch of them in there, and then there's the Eagle Prismacolors, which was originally what they were called before um, they changed their name to Barrel. I've even got, let's see here before I, hopefully I won't spill anything, I've got some old Brunzeal, which I showed you earlier, I got Brunzeal. This, these are vintage Brunzeal, these are awesome. I love them, I think they're a great alternative to uh, Prismacolor, in my opinion, even though they don't have as much color selection. So there's kind of like a, a myriad of different colored pencils. Some of these are, are vintage, unused Prismacolors. And let's see here, we got some Copics over there, the small selection that I have. And uh, a few extra ones, a few extra pigment markers in there. So those are a lot of fun. You can get the Boone Stash Organizer for about $20 on Amazon. I absolutely love it and I absolutely recommend it because you can actually, you can, sorry, you can actually put this on the wall or you can lay it down kind of and it's like angled. So, I mean, it's, it's not just for art supplies, it's for just about anything that you want to store. So we're going to take a look at my messy ass desk. There's really no other way around it. Um, this is not actually what I would consider to be messy. It's just the start of a project, but it's not immaculate either. So I've seen it worse. Let's just put it that way. Um, over here is a nice little compartment. So I've got this um, wonderful Carl Angel uh, crank sharpener. And then I have some of my favorite handheld sharpeners, which are the uh, Faber-Castell Trio. And then I just bought this one. This is the... the uh, it's made in Germany. It's an Alvin, and it looks like a little inkwell, and one of my favorite artists uses it, so I thought maybe it might be of good use. So I've got the Art Graph water-soluble tin in there so that it doesn't get lost anywhere in particular. I've got a little compartment here for different various uh, erasers for colored pencil and ink and all kinds of stuff. There's an eraser for everything. And then that's just full of shit back there. I don't even know what it is. And there's an eraser shield and I think a random blending stump and a candle from Ganesh. And uh, that's the catch-all right there, I guess. <laughs> but whatever. I mean, you know, it happens. That's just how artists are. Here's some extra ink tents in a peanut butter jar. And I set these aside because these are the colors that I'm using for that particular um, eyepiece down there. So this is a vintage, like, show-all type of canister that I got at, uh, I think it was a thrift store. Yeah, it was, it was some kind of local thrift store. And I have the Lyra Skin Tones in here. They're bigger. They're a bigger barrel. And uh, I really like them. But I finally got the sharpener that went with, with them, so I'm excited to use those in a future video. So, Oh, this is one of my favorite parts. So this is an apothecary jar, and I've always wanted one, and I may have to get two or three, but I thought, what am I going to do with those? And I finally got an idea. I put watercolor tubes in here. So my growing collection of various brands are all in there. See? And they're pretty to look at, too. They're just I don't know what it is about them, but they're pleasing to the eye. And I keep it in the corner there so I don't knock it off. <laughs> Everyone, I'm going to be honest, my setup to record videos, which you watch overhead, is nothing glamorous <laughs> right now. And eventually, I'd like to put something up on the ceiling and hang it down, but we're going to stick with this for right now, because it works, even though it looks very generic. But you know what? It works. I'm just showing you behind the scenes, it's not that pretty. Uh, I got two various lamps. I got an hot light and this little LED guy puts out quite a bit of light. Um, I got the acrylic wash. Open stock goes in here. Another one of those cute little cases from Michaels. I think I got it for two bucks last spring. So um, that's where my acrylic wash goes. These things are great for open stock if you want to buy open stock and just kind of keep them in there. And then I've got the acrylic wash set here. We'll be using those in a future video. Uh, extra stuff. We got some blenders here and some Derwent watercolor pencils. Oh, I totally, I had this like sitting here and I went to go reach for something and I broke it and I haven't even used it yet. Like I karate chopped it right, right in the holder. Feel bad. So, so I got a little fat Buddha over there for good measure. I also, for those of you who know that I am very much into metaphysics, I keep some crystals nearby. 
I got my amethyst. And I've also got an amethyst slash quartz, which I, I really, really love. One of my friends gave this to me. It's very dear to me. Got some acrylic just hanging out here. Got some brushes. Various brushes in this cute little jar. So this is the general workspace area upstairs here. That's my table. It really never looks entirely immaculate, so I'm getting started on a project there, as you can see. Uh, so I made some revisions last night, and this is my little wooden bunny that I got at a tea shop over in a special place over in the city. And uh, I have named her Gail. I don't know why, but it just came to me. <laughs> it's not a name that I necessarily chose, but she serves a purpose. She has got all of my Windsor & Newton pigment markers there, and I got those on clearance. So I'm really super happy, and I'm going to be testing them out very soon. So she carries those because I ran out of marker space up here, unfortunately. So what I did was I took the pencils that were from this Boon Stash, organizer and follow me down I put them in this nifty little drawer here and let's see where did I go okay these are my open stock that's where I put them so I've got some super color in there and illuminance and some other particular uh, there's some Derwent and Faber Castell in there but basically any open stock are gonna go in there uh, put the fine liners and all the good stuff in here, little Mozart markers, and then this is kind of a mixture of different things, but some gel pens and um, some, I believe this is the Spectrum Noir sparkly stuff, extra microns and the Copic Wide and Magnum, and then this, whoop, hold on. That's where some extra Sharpies go and stuff like that. And if I need to get to them, I can just um, lift up this little thing. So, And then the bottom is nothing art related. So, <laughs> But um, I got this on, at Michael's and I believe it was on sale for about, I don't know, $5. So it was a good deal. And I get to look at my beautiful bunny. So there you go. So this here are two carts that I keep extra stuff handy because I kind of like to be able to just have what I normally work on right there in front of me even though I don't have enough to you know take out of the cabinets and just put it all right there <laughs> plus it already looks a little cluttery even though it's supposed to be an organizational tactic um, but I want to show you what is on the, these carts and what I keep nearby so what I have on the top shelf of this little mini cart is um, it's a box full of watercolors that I normally use. Um, I won't show you everything just to save time, but like this is my custom water palette that I've made. It's got like several different brands in it. Um, you can actually buy the, the little pans and the holder and everything on Amazon for fairly cheap, under $20 altogether. Uh, I've got two metallic ones that I use. This is the um, God's Eye Tambi Sorry Colors, which is nothing but white and gold. And then this is, um, these are awesome. These are the Aurora colors by, uh, I think it's pronounced Boku Andu. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I'm not real good with that. So <laughs> pardon me. I've got, you know, um, Krita color aqua break. Like not very many people are aware of this, but this is a really cool little gadget that um, it's, it comes with a sponge and it's got several colors but you can take these little bricks out of color and use them as crayons and then uh, paint over them you can use them as gouache or watercolor depending on how much water you add uh, apparently you can put some of the pigment into an airbrush too and use it that way so that's pretty awesome for under twenty dollars you can't beat that uh, but like the De La Rowdy Aquafine, Jane Davenport, I've got several of the Prima marketing ones and all that good stuff. And then I got something in here that I'm going to put in the giveaway and I can't show you that. So, you don't get to know. I got more odorless minerals, mineral, odorless, min uh, odorless mineral 
spirits, OPT. So there we go. We should just call it OPT. Sounds like a, sounds like something personal, huh? Uh, <laughs> I've got these extra um, pencil wraps. These are the Derwent drawing pencils. They're known as the fur and feather pencils. I think I might have mentioned that before. I have them. I had them previously in the Boone stash last night, but I decided to go ahead and put them in a pencil wrap and rearrange some things. As I said before, these are the Graphitent from Derwent as well. Fancy water soluble graphite that's tinted. It's pretty awesome. And of course, you can see over here, I've got extra palettes handy. So um, the second row, I've got the Pelican Transparent watercolors, which I showed in the art hall recently. Um, these particular parts, they pop off and then they become uh, water cups for you. So um, it's it's a little bit too intricate for me to like get together and take apart and show you. So you can see it in the future video. Then uh, their opaque watercolor collection looks like this. So this is both Pelican opaque and then Pelican transparent. I'm gonna use them together in a video. I've got the Sennelier. I, I keep I keep forgetting it's Sennelier. It's not Sennelier, and I keep mispronouncing it. But I got it right that time. This is the La Petite Aquarelle. Uh, we've got a f awesome, I keep this like pretty much whenever I go travel, I keep it with me. It's got a water brush. It's got um, several different pens, pens and pencils that I love and use. Oops. And then like little sketching pencils and stuff. I go through these phases where I have to have a bunch of pens. I don't know what it is, but I'll just be like, I have to find pens and I have to have them. And you know, whenever you sketch and you really love ink and everything, you kind of it's kind of a requirement to have them on you and with you at all times. Uh, so the Gold Favor, this was in a, a lot that I had um, acquired, and they pop off here. These became the Faber-Castell Art Grit pen pencils. So they're basically the same thing, except for they were just their the vintage name. Um, now they have like little ridges on the side, and they're mostly marketed towards students and children but these are really high quality for being what they are and they're light fast too I believe um, but yeah that's this is this is the affordable alternative to polychromos by the way at least in Faber Castell's line uh, we got the Japanese Japanese watercolors um, God's Eye Tammy from Kurtaki so they're not very portable but they're really pretty and they, they work pretty well and they're right there so they're handy and on the bottom, I'm not going to, well, should I? There we go. I hope that's not too, too much for you. The Uni Pasca markers, these are great for um, special effects and painting pencil, like painting on top of your, um, like if you want to bring out like different colors of like whiskers or uh, draw drawings with hair, like super highlights and stuff like that. But they're, they're good to use on their own too. And... Very opaque. Um, Ta-da! Artist Squash, the designer set. It's awesome! I'm missing a color. It's it's up on the desk, though. But that is such a pretty collection. Isn't it? I love it. It was designed on a specific scale, which I talk about in the other video, and I don't remember what it's called now, but it's specifically, like, pigmented, selected pigments to be able to design with, I suppose. But I love them. They're fantastic. And these are really, these are big and a little bit goes a long way with Holbein and that is included with their watercolors. I mean, their watercolors go a little bit a long way. So whenever you get a 15 milliliter, um, you know, watercolor from Holbein, it's pretty much for life, I think. These are the um, soft pastels from Coe Noir. Um, I'm, they're extra soft. I'm going to be start, I'm going to start using pastels more often in my portraits uh, to save time and um, just to learn the medium too because I'm always curious and I'm always learning so uh, so there's that Shin Han I got these for Christmas with a gift card Ta -da! these are the Shin Han professional and they had great ratings on Amazon and they were really affordable it was under thirty dollars so ooh, look the Sun's coming out and shining upon them so it must be a good sign so um, the reason why I haven't taken them out and put them in the apothecary jar is because uh, I want to keep them in here for when I do a review. So, until then. And then, hopefully I won't spill anything. These are the ink tents blocks. I've got them open because I'm doing the eyeball. 
and uh, I, I adore these things. These are awesome. Inktense is awesome. There's a little bit of a learning curve with them, but you know, if you hang in there with me and you learn, you'll figure it out. Neo colors. These things are awesome too. Look how beautiful they are. Look how beautiful they are. Um, these are very versatile. They're at first I was kind of like when I started like kind of getting into watercolor crayons, I thought, well, what the hell do you do with these things? You know, I was kind of like, mm, I don't know how to like utilize them in my own work. Now I've found plenty of purposes with them. They make great for like covering big areas and they just melt underwater. So you can use them like a crayon and then put water on them and then they just magically transform into watercolor and they're more like a little bit like gouache. They're a little more opaque than watercolor. However, you can also use them on like a heated board, like a um, like I have an acoustic method that I teach in another video and you can put them on a griddle, like a uh, a small like low heat griddle and it is amazing. They will they will melt underneath it. I mean they will just like they'll work so beautifully. But they're very versatile. I love them. So that's them. I've got a book I haven't really read. I just kinda of thumbed through it. <laughs> and then this wonderful book too. Isn't that beautiful? That's a beautiful piece there. But uh, I bought this on Amazon and a lot of it is is mostly stuff that I'm already familiar with, but I thought I would get it just you know, is a gentle reminder, and maybe there's some more ideas in here. Like he's got like fish and seahorses and aquatic life, and just I like looking through illustrations just to get ideas. And uh, got a compass down here. That's real interesting, isn't it? I already showed you Gail, which is the bunny on top. And so um, this, I'll I'll be honest, this cart isn't quite as interesting because it's got some empty. Um, bags. Isn't this a lovely bag? I had to have this. I'm weird. I had to have like the texture was just wonderful and it said lovely things. So um, the moment I saw it I kind of fell in love with it and it was at Michael's and it was 20 bucks and I was like oh hell no. I'm not paying 20 bucks for that. So I waited until it went on clearance and I got it for like I don't know five bucks something like that. Um, but I'll figure out a purpose for it. There's plenty of room in there. I did take it with me on a vacation recently. So this is kind of nostalgic for me, and I love it. It's the St. Petersburg White Knights watercolor. It's all junky looking, but forgive me. It's It's been well loved. I love that you get the full pans, and it's only like 60 bucks, and it's really good quality. In my opinion, it's good quality. They got some amazing colors in here. Like this, no, that one's not, that's, uh, that's Holbein right there. But this color, which you can't see because it's so pigmented, is kind of like this sort of uh, really super deep, um, turquoise. It's like a grayish turquoise. It's really interesting. And uh, I don't know what the colors were because I bought it before I even really cared what the color names were. Uh, I got a couple of uh, Jane Davenport's matte acrylics, which I have a future project that I'm going to use them on, and you'll find out about that later. But this particular color set, I had to have this. Like, for whatever reason, that particular color combination, I, I was just kind of awestruck by it. And then there's the portrait colors. Oh, I'm losing stuff. This is a pencil wrap full of da -da -da -da, ink tense pencils. Yay. They're handy. And, uh, you know, those work with the blocks too. So, I love them. You can't go wrong with ink tense, really. Um, I've got the box for the La Petite Aquarelle. So, whenever um, I do the review on it, I know what colors are because the colors are listed on the box. Usually, like with their uh, artist line, they put them on top in a film on top of the colors, but they don't do that with the La Petite Aquarelle. So, I got to keep the box around. Just a nice little cooler watercolor box. I'm going to save this and turn it into another palette um, measuring tape or whatever. I don't have rulers around. I don't know. <laughs> Um, color mixing guides. I believe that like I think every artist could use these. These are both like 10 bucks each on Amazon and this one's for acry oil, acrylic, and watercolor and then this one's for just oil and acrylic. Stop it! Stop it! Hey! I've got my cats are arguing with each other so <laughs> I've got these which are the rest of the pit pastels and, and you can see their portrait colors so um, it kind of works out that way. I just got them in this really fancy Fancy, 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 fancy box. 
cost me all of like 79 cents. Okay, this is my first gouache set that I had, the Caran d'Ache gouache. Um, I love them. They're well loved too. And these little guys, they pop out. I love that. They pop out individually. So that's pretty cool. He's good quality. You got the T-square because everybody needs one of those. And I've got jelly rolls. Jelly roll pens. It's the entire collection right there. Boom. Well, you've got your metallics. You've got your... This, these are the moonlight ones. These are the ones that show up really well on black paper. You've got the gold shadows, silver shadows, and uh, there's another. There's regular kinds in here. There's all kinds in here, so it's a good time. It's good to have. I've got this completely adorable bag here. Here's another adorable bag. It's a cat, isn't that cute? It's what Target's for, isn't it? Just to suck us in with really cute shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Peppers. This is my Sergeant Peppers uh, color chart bag. Oops, I didn't even remove the label. Oh well. Um, <laughs> some of these you may have seen in other videos, but I keep stuff like this in here and like older artwork that uh, I haven't gotten frames for or anything. So I keep, I try to keep it organized, but it's, you know. It's a little discombobulated, which Sarah Colors, the Sarah Colors official channel, um, she suggests to get a color book and just keep, basically it's it's like a Bristol um, book or mixed media and just keep all of your charts in there. So, But for now, that's what I've got and, you know, it's a good time. Underneath it, I have pan pastels. These are so good for those of you who are colored pencil artists and want to lay down a foundation of color. For like very quickly, these are the um, these in particular. Let me zoom in. Those are the uh, I think those are the extra darks. You got your primaries, the tinted ones, and of course for myself, there's the portrait ones. And uh, these run about um, the sets run about seventy dollars each on Amazon, and the trays I believe are twelve. So I mean they are pricey, but I recommend you know getting a couple of them open stock because um, you can kind of paint with them in a way that you can't do with just sticks. So um, I highly recommend them. I wanted to re-record this because I had recorded it handheld, and it was just so messy. I thought maybe maybe you guys probably wouldn't care to have motion sickness. So. Um, here is where, this is in between the um, cabinets, by the way. Um, one of my projectors, I have bigger projectors downstairs. Uh, this is a box full of De La Rowney, uh, put, like, it was, it came in a set. It was a Black Friday sale. I got it for my son, and uh, he hasn't used them yet. So we will find out if he actually uses them, because if he's not going to use them, I will use them. <laughs> and, uh. So this is a picture that I found in this box and my friend found it as she was cleaning out her house and getting ready to move. Her dog tried to chew it up, but it's a picture of me from 2005 and I cannot attest to exactly what's happening here, but uh, I'm going to assume I was dancing or something like that. Uh, I do remember, it just brought back a lot of memories because I remember this giant Kill Bill poster that I had and it was so awesome. And I had it, <laughs> this was one of, this was my first house that I ever had, so uh, I was you know, free to decorate it the way I wanted to. So I had this awesome Kill Bill uh, poster and then I had it on my refrigerator and then I don't know what happened to it. And I don't know what happened to like the paper lantern or anything. Like I have none of this stuff anymore. I don't think none of that stuff on my wall is even there anymore. I don't have it. I don't own it is what I mean. So then um, I got this little guy at Michael's for about, I think it was like 70% off, so I got it for like, I don't know, $3, something like that. So in here, I have like a collection, a growing collection of soft pastels that are more like artist grade, and then there's some other stuff in there that's not artist grade, but uh, I got broken pastels that I bought for 50% off. Um, there's some Holbein in here, some Holbein oil pastels and soft pastels. Uh, more break, broken stuff. I've got several of the Senil... <laughs> Let's see if I can pronounce it. Uh, Sennelier. Is that 
So I, I just pronounced it just like moments ago and I can't remember. Anyways, sorry, if you're French, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Um, one of those um, things that I can't pronounce that are the blending, um, blending things for um, pastels. Chemoy, I guess, or chem, I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, some other drawing pastels. I think these are like some budget pastels. Uh, Neo colors. These work really well with the encaustics. And these, these are the Neo color ones. So they are water resistant. The Neo color twos, which I showed you previously, those are water uh, soluble. So that's the big difference between Neo one and Neo Neo color one and Neo color two. And these are the portrait colors, and they're beautiful. And then I've got some vintage gray ones there in the bottom. But uh. Second drawer is budget pastels. Um, I think each one of them costs like five bucks. No, this that one was three dollars, and the ones that are kind of just hanging out there in the bottom, those were five, like for the whole set. Um, bottom here, oil pastels, the Dollar Rowney um, that are hanging out there. Then Sennelier, Sennelier. <laughs> I cannot remember how to pronounce it. I, 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 oh God, never mind. I'm not even going to pronounce it. One of my favorite brands, we're just going to call it that. Um, that's their oil pastels. And this is their colorless blender, which is pretty cool. And then there's a flesh tone that I bought. And, and I really like these. These are the Caran d'Ache Neo, Neo pastels. So there they are. They're really smooth. I like them. So that's where I keep them. I'm not real big on, I just, I really haven't wrapped my head around the oil pastels. I mean, I did, I did a David Bowie portrait and a couple other things with oil pastels, but I really haven't like gone full force and utilized them to the maximum. But uh, I know you can do some amazing things with them. So moving on. I'm gonna show you real quick some of the artwork that's on my walls here. Um, I know it's not technically part of my um, collection, but it is part of the, quote, studio slash living room workspace area. So this is the uh, Gerard Way watercolor pencil piece that I did um, last year around January. And uh, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing that. That was my first watercolor pencil piece. And um, I used Neocolor for the hair um, because otherwise it just would have been kind of daunting. And uh, it worked out really well because Neocolor has some incredibly awesome bright colors. So uh, the gouache blue girl that I did in the first YouTube video I ever did, which was the Holbein Artist Squash Review. Um, so there you go. Uh, this is, this is, um, uh, this is Loma from Shade the Changing Girl. She is a bird <laughs> and uh, you're just going to have to read. She inhabits the body of a girl and, and I'm not going to tell you too much more because you're going to have to just read the comic. But uh, this is an original by Marley Zarcone. You can see that she signed it there. Um, I met her at um, New York Comic Con, or not New York Comic Con. I met her at NY, it, I keep wanting to say New York for some reason. I met her at NCCC, which is North Carolina, North Carolina Comic Con. And um, she was very gracious enough to let me commission her for a piece, so that's pretty cool. And she's a very, very nice woman, so very talented. I love her brushwork. And then there's Davy again. There's Davy there. So I do love Davy. He's great. And then uh, my dear friend, Arlena. Arlena Holtzman, she's a fantastic artist. She gave me this print of her lion for free. It was very nice of her. Uh, we shared a place in Soulard together at the uh, Soulard Art Gallery. We were residents together in the same room, so that's how I got to know her, and she was wonderful. So, um, oh, this is, <laughs> this is my, um, my piece is called The Visitation. I'm just gonna put the, let's see if I can get some, a little bit better lighting. We're not gonna put direct lighting on it because there's varnish on it, and uh, it'll just, it'll just glow. So the whole concept behind this was, um, basically, my belief in other dimensional beings, um, you know, you can make whatever judgments you might make, that's fine, you know, but um, basically, this came to me in a vision, I was driving one day, and I was like, what am I going to paint, and I was on my way to my friend Arlena's house, and then this popped in my head, and it was kind of the whole um, belief that what if 
what if extraterrestrials weren't exactly the way that Hollywood portrays them? What if they were actually visiting us, um, not from outer space, but from other dimensions, and they were coming to us as um, animals that we love and care about? So that was, it's kind of my like little X-Files moment there. <laughs> but um, I really enjoyed making this painting and um, it really meant a lot to me. So um, one of my favorites from last year. So this is one of my pieces from Lance David White, one of the other artists that I shared the gallery with whenever I was a gallery artist or resident artist at Sula Art Gallery. I loved his whimsical style and this is actually wood. And um, he's actually in Nashville, I think, now. And I, I just, I loved his work, and I have several of his pieces. I've got this um, wonderful little cat piece there. And and I just, I love his style. It's just so great. And everybody really enjoyed him, and he had a great personality, and has a great personality. He's a wonderful person. So um, I had to have several pieces of his artwork in my place. Uh, this piece, I'm not really sure. I forgot who the artist is. I bought it at a gallery, and I really loved it. And uh, it's, yeah, it's a cat, and it's done in gouache. It's kind of like a little bit of a noir, it has a noir feeling to it. And it uh, looks like he's kind of like a detective or something. <laughs> I just, I like it, I love cats, so. Uh, we're gonna pan out here. This is Trent, he's a big boy, he's he's big. Okay, I've got the softbox on him, so he looks a little blue. Uh, but this is not, I don't have any daylight going on too much anymore. So, um, this one, was done last year in May of 2016. It took a while, um, probably a couple weeks. And so I'm going to see if I can zoom in on some of this detail here. But these were done with the Dr. P.H. Martin's watercolors. And you can kind of see how the layers break down whenever you zoom in. Those eyes were actually done in watercolor prints with the Albert Durer. And then the rest of it was done with entirely the face. And um, most of the background was done in entirely Dr. P.H. Martin's watercolor except for his zodiac chart here. This area here was done by those line painters by Derwent and I did, let's see, let me think here. I think, yeah, there were some methods which I used saran wrap and uh, some of the drip techniques that I've used. But uh, I believe this is like a 30 by 35. It's a very odd, very odd size and I really didn't intend for it to be that way but uh, yeah, you live and learn.